the sports banner i'm calvin here with luca and bryce and today we're going to talk to you about the free agent signings that are happening this week in the nfl so i think it was literally yesterday that the uh legal temp tampering window opened up which means that teams can start negotiating contracts prematurely uh none of them are official until march 17th which is tomorrow where we are so all of these are technically preliminary but most of them are going to happen uh, so I'll go first. I'm just going to talk about five or six different guys, uh, starting with Mike Hilton, cornerback, going to the Cincinnati Bengals on a four-year contract for $24 million. Uh, this is a good pickup for the Bengals. This is going to be a good addition for them in the, uh, in the secondary, uh, somewhere that I think that they were hurting last year. They were letting a lot of passes fly over them, so it'll be good to have a guy like that in the back. Now if we could sign William Jackson, that, that'd be great too. Who day? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be a good addition. Yeah, uh, my second guy is actually not a new. Didn't really sign with anybody new. It's uh, Von Miller. Uh, he signed a one-year extension with the Denver Broncos, eighteen million. I'm pretty sure it was a part of his old contract, so he just essentially they exercised his option. Uh, but he's there for at least one more year on eighteen million. Uh, so not hitting the, uh, not moving to another team this year. So it's good for the Broncos to keep their guy. Uh, you guys got any thoughts on him? He's good, yeah. No, great, great deal from the um, Broncos to keep him. I don't know what to think of the Broncos, dude. I don't know if they're trying to contend or if they're trying to tank. So, yeah, it's. I think it's contend. They're in an interesting spot. I think if you're trying to contend, you don't sign Von Miller again unless they're planning to give him an even larger extension next year. So I think that they Mm -hmm. are trying to get up there, but the (laughs) the question is how far they make it. I mean. They have a lot of question marks, particularly at quarterback. Drew Locke is a very, very big question mark because he showed a lot of promise in his first year, but this year he looked like mm-hmm. hot garbage, one of the worst in the NFL. Well, so, Yeah, well, to be fair to the Broncos, hopefully the league doesn't screw them over this season. True. So. Yeah. Uh, all right, number three, uh, defensive end. <laughs> defensive end Yannick Ngakwe, who I, I don't know how to say that name. I'm sorry. I probably butchered it. Uh, he signed a two-year deal with the Raiders for $26 million. This is a good pickup for the Raiders, who <laughs> kind of need it. Uh, they did not have the power to stop a lot of teams last year. They were letting a lot of leads go. They were letting a lot of teams run it up on them. So it's going to be nice to have a guy like this who can hopefully create disturbance up on the front lines, keep the quarterback from getting as many big plays by stopping them early. Uh, this is a good addition for him. Mm-hmm. The for Raiders, sure. I also don't know what they're going to look like next year because they have the potential to be good. They definitely had it this year and just squandered it. But the question is, once again, will they? I think that they look like a very even team, 8-9, and 9-8, nine, nine and eight, somewhere in there. With the, with the additional game. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel about them. Dude, I mean, the thing with a lot of these teams is that I can't really give a judgment yet because we got to think of what today is. It's day two of the legal tampering period. There's still a draft in a mm-hmm. month and a half. So, like, I don't think it's fair to mm-hmm. to really say, like, man, they're going to go 9-8 and eight or 8-9 eight and because it's like this is literally the first step in their team-building exercise before the mm-hmm. supposed preseason starts. Yeah, true, true. I'll, ju- I'll refrain from giving any more record <coughs> predictions, but uh, I just want to, <laughs> I'm just wondering what you guys are thinking about how they're looking so far, because they seem to have a lot of work to do in my opinion. Yeah. And I think they've been making, yeah, moves. but they don't, they don't look tragic. They don't look horrible. So, all right. Uh, number four for me, uh, quarterback, Ryan Fitzpatrick, signed a one-year deal with the football team for $10 million. The price tag doesn't really matter. They're actually getting a rather cheap deal for a quarterback, and I think Fitzpatrick has a lot of upside, but also a lot of downside. So I think I think he might be the one who can take them to the playoffs again next year. Uh, if they can do it with the uh, mess that they had in quarterback room this year, then I think Fitzpatrick can take them there too. So hopefully he gets his trip to the, to the playoffs, and uh, maybe he can win a couple things. You never know. Now, now, don't don't forget about the circumstances of last year. I mean, the Giants, they were hot garbage. Dallas was just plagued by injuries and terrible defensive play. Like, are you really? Mm-hmm. And then the Eagles, freaking Carson Wentz, train wreck, lack of weapons on offense. Like, are you really going to bank on that again? 
Well, I think that Dallas and the Eagles both have the potential to get better. Yeah. But I think that the football team does as well. I think that all three of them could take leaps up. Now, I don't think they're all going to be uh, winning teams per se, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. they should all get at least a little better. Yeah. So I think that you they, they do have a chance. I don't know if they will. I won't call that they will yet, but they do have a chance, especially with Fitzpatrick. All right. You Their just team kinda, got better oh, with this signing. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Fit, yeah, I agree. But again, I'm really excited to see more from Heineke. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't forget about him. Just saying. Yeah, he could well, also. No, I, I think Fitz is a good mentor for Heineke because he's only played definitely. What is it? One game in the NFL. So, this is a this was a good signing from them. He's a Fitz Magic is a good backup, and uh, he'll be mm-hmm. a good mentor. Yeah, I think he'll be the starter first, and then we'll see what happens. Who Heineke or Fitzpatrick? Fitzpatrick. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think Fitzpatrick will be the starter, and they'll ease Heineke into the role. Maybe yeah, just no. play mm-hmm. him each when they need him. I, I totally Heine- agree. Heineke is the kind of guy who can make those scrambles and those big runs when they need it, and Fitzpatrick's more of the long ball, deep, deep throw guy. So I yeah. think they'll use him situationally. Mm-hmm. I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, and my last guy is uh, wide receiver Nelson Aguilar, who signed a two-year deal with the New England Patriots for $22 million. Uh, I, I think very highly of Aguilar as my two, uh, my two colleagues here uh, know. Um, I yeah. think he's one of the better receivers in the league, or at least I think he can be. Last year he was all right, middle of the league in my opinion, but I think next year with the Patriots he really has a chance to step up. And I think this is a good, this was a good player acquisition for the Patriots. They might have overpaid slightly. Uh, for the production that Aguilar has gotten so far, I don't know if I would give him $11 million a year. But I'm not going to fault the Patriots because if Aguilar is as good as I think he will be, then that'll be a, a, a great deal in the end. Yeah, I like him. <laughs> I have a I have a newfound respect for him, so I'm I'm hyped. Honestly, with the price tag, it's not actually that bad in my mind. Like eleven million a year. I mean, it's not the worst contract in the world. Like I think that for that price, I mean, yeah, you could you could take a shot on him. I mean, what else does New England have right now at receiver? Yeah, that, that's uh, fair. I think yeah. that Aguilar is a, a, a great acquisition. I think that he's going to be a really good weapon for Cam. And speaking of weapons for Cam, uh, Bryce, you want to you wanna talk about your guys? Of course. All right. So starting off kind of my five, six free agents, um, we're going to start with a tandem right here. Jonu Smith and Hunter Henry both <laughs> got signed by the New England Patriots. Jonu Smith signed for four years, $50 million. Hunter Henry signed for three years and $37.5 million. Um, some people have called him on Twitter the the Boston Tea Party, the T being retired. Ha 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 ha! Yeah, that was good. Calvin laugh. Ha ha ha! I, I, I did. I swear. Okay. <laughs> okay, y'all. Anywho, Johnu Smith, he he had a very solid couple seasons with the Titans. His his main role really was backing up um, Delaney Walker because around when Johnu Smith was drafted, Delaney Walker. Started undergoing a lot of injuries, a lot of concussions, I think. But, yes, John Smith's kind of always been the... He's never been viewed as, like, a primary tight end. He was always the second guy up, and fortunately, he got a lot of time to shine there. Hunter Henry, on the other hand, he's been subject to a lot of injuries. You got a concussion and a knee strain in 2016, a small kidney laceration in 2017... A whole ACL tear in 2018, and a leg tibial plateau fracture in 2019. So the guy's just been injured almost every year of his NFL career. But I think that these two really complement each other very well. Jonu Smith, his big advantage is that he is a speedy tight end, and as well as being able to fill in for injury-prone tight ends, as he did with Delaney Walker. For Hunter Henry, his strength lies in his pass catching. He's caught pretty much over 600 yards for each year that he's played. So whether it be a two tight end set or one filling in for the other, I think that this is a good pairing for the Patriots, and the offensive coordinator, Josh McDaniels, is going to have a lot of fun with these two tight end sets. Yeah, I think that this is a fantastic pickup for um, the Patriots. And I think Bill Belichick is really looking at the strengths of Cam with these two pickups because 
adding these two big tight ends, specifically John o. Smith, he is a tank. Sometimes when he's out there playing, I, I mix him up with uh, Derrick Henry. So he, he is a very, very big player, and so is Hunter Henry. So these two big big players, they can both line up in the line on double tight end sets, and that can allow for a lot of running plays with Cam Newton. So I think that the synergy between these two players and the system that Bill Belichick wants to run with Cam is perfect, and he did a fantastic job about finding the uh, personnel that he needed to run his system. Because it, r- it really looks like he's going to lean into Cam's strengths, uh, let the running mm-hmm. game just flourish, especially with these guys. Uh, I, I agree, and I want to say to any Patriots fan that was frustrated last season, trust the process. Bill Belichick is arguably the best college, or not college, football coach right now, in my opinion, arguably. Yeah. Maybe yeah, not I w- the best. I would, s- I would say he's the best. And I know you guys haven't had a lot of losing in your time, but this is just a part of it. Every now and then there's a year yeah. that goes wrong, but just trust the process. You have one of the best head coaches, and I'm sure he's going to put right the ship, especially with these moves. It's looking like it's happening. Exactly. For sure. Don't sleep on Kendrick Bourne, though, another wide receiver they signed. Anyways, next guy we're talking about is Corey Davis. He signed with... The New York Jets, three years, $37.5 million. I think this was a better signing than the Aguilar signing. That's my opinion, though. Totally fine Mm -hmm. if you disagree. Because I think, just to start off, Corey Davis is going to have more of an impact on the team than Aguilar would on the Patriots. And that's, again, my opinion. Totally, it's fair to disagree, you know. Just depends on how you feel. Last season, the receivers for the Jets... The most yardage that a receiver had was Jamison Crowder with 699 yards. You usually have like a 1,000-yard receiver on your team. And the Jets, that they, they, they were not thriving in the pass game. And that's what Corey Davis is really bringing to the table. He, had, he was 16 yards away from an 1,000-yard season last season. He had five touchdowns as well, which is a career high for him. Also, his catch percentage was the highest in his career at 70.6. So you've got a full-on, just talented wide receiver. Something that the Jets really were lacking last year. And another reason why Sam Donald is just stuck. And just so... He's not getting anywhere with his career. I don't think he's really developing. Because he's just been thrown into one of the worst situations that he could be thrown into. And obviously he's not elevating his team to playoff standards. Or even winning standards. Yeah, I I can agree with that. I think that having Corey Davis or a wide receiver like him would have been really good for um, Sam Darnold. But I also don't think Darnold had a lot of upside to begin with. Maybe we thought he did, but mm-hmm. he didn't. So I wouldn't really... <laughs> I don't think that it helped that he was with the Jets, but I also don't know if he would have been that stellar outside of the Jets. However... It is good that they have a receiver. I think that really how much this matters depends on how good their quarterback becomes. Obviously, your your receivers are only going to be as good as your quarterback is, I believe. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I mean, they don't really have too many options. Uh, obviously, there's Zach Wilson, Jamar Chase. I'm not going to do a whole... I'm not going to do a whole uh, <laughs> breakdown of the NFL draft quarterbacks, but I... This is going to revolve heavily around how good their quarterback is and how good they play together, whether this mm-hmm. trade comes out looking good or not. I think it could look good. I think it could look terrible. It just depends really on how their synergy goes. I sent a video yeah. in the group chat for y'all for uh, Sam Donald making a freaking crazy throw, and it's really what I think why Sam Donald isn't as bad as everyone says that he is. I mean, he's got some talent. It's just he hasn't been able to show it. Yeah, we'll put that in the link below. <clears throat> All right, who you got next? All right, next, kind of sticking on the Jets theme, Carl Lawson signed with the New York Jets. Three years, $45 million. Um, so Carl Lawson, not much of a numbers guy from last season. He only got five and a half sacks and four tackles for loss. But the thing with Carl Lawson is he's been at the quarterback a lot. Last season... Uh, Pro Football Focus had him as with a pass rushing win percentage of 21.1%. That's the third highest for defensive ends. 
And even though he's only he only got 5.5 sacks last season, you, you'd think that next season he's gonna finish. You know, he beat he beats the line or he beats the offensive lineman, but you know, obviously, what makes a sack a sack is that you get to the quarterback, and I'm sure he's gonna be able to do that. So he was he, he was really good for the Bengals, and if I'm being completely honest, if he wanted to return to the Bengals. If there was an interest there, then I think the Bengals made a huge mistake by letting him go. But I'm looking to see that Lawson makes a big impact for the Jets this season. Yeah, I think he's a good impact player. A lot of a lot of fans of different teams wanted him. I just looking at social media, almost every time he was mentioned, there were different people saying, "Yeah, come to this team, come to that team." So he was definitely a high ticket item, and the Jets were very should be very very happy with him with that acquisition how much was his contract for again 45 million dollars in how many years over three years 30 million of it was guaranteed yeah so that that's a big contract but it's for a good player he should see a lot of production in new york but they also if they really want to get the most out of him they're probably going to have to find somebody to go alongside him or on the other side Mm -hmm. of him that's going to be good as well because you can have a great defensive end, like look at Miles Garrett in Cleveland, but really their production will be hampered if they don't have somebody a- along across from them, you know, providing that double threat. That is where the, he becomes really dangerous. So I think he'll he'll look good, but I don't know if he'll look a lot better than he did with the Bengals unless they can improve the line even more. Mm-hmm. <coughs> I got nothing to add. Yeah. <laughs> and no, but actually that's a good point, Calvin. Speaking on that, the next guy I have is Trey Hendrickson. In which he signed with the Cincinnati Bengals, four years, sixty million. So he got paid more than Carl Lawson. And this is not a bad signing, but I think mm-hmm. it, it was a good way to rebound for the Bengals after just losing Carl Lawson. But kind of speaking of what Calvin was saying, I mean, you could view him as a one-hit wonder. And after all, he did line up the opposite of the six-time Pro Bowler defensive end and Cameron Jordan on the Saints. And to add to this kind of doubt, the same stat that I referenced earlier with Carl Lawson, Trey Hendrickson won 16.8% of his snaps, which is 22nd for pass rushers. But I'm Mm -hmm. just going to reiterate again, it's not a bad signing. I just think that if you were able to retain Lawson and maybe even sign Hendrickson, if you had both on your team, that would be just... Mm -hmm so so impactful for this Bengals team but one more thing though um something that i didn't really notice until today is that if this season's not good for trey hendrickson the Bengals have an out clause which means that after this season they don't have to pay him anymore and he can just become a free agent again i think this is my opinion on the limited knowledge i know on him he's going here and he's proven himself I think I'm seeing someone who's got confidence and he's not on as good as a team anymore. And I think he's going to do well. I don't think he's going to do perfect, but I don't think there's going to be any reason for the Bengals to use that out clause after the end of the next season. I think this is a very uh, curious signing. I think if I were the Bengals, I'm trying to keep Carl Lawson instead Mm -hmm. of uh, getting Trey Hendrickson. For one, I think they might have been able to get him uh, Carl lost for cheaper than Carl Lawson got in uh, New mm-hmm. York. Yeah, just because it's the same team, he might be willing to take a little bit less to stay in Cincinnati. He might not. Who knows? But even if they offer the same contract that New- the New-, New York does, it's still less than they offered for Trey Hendrickson. So this is a very weird move. I, I would have personally gone with Carl Lawson over it. Maybe they see the upside in Hendrickson, mm-hmm. and they believe that he's going to get better. And I wouldn't blame him. He seemed really good last year, but. It is an interesting move. However, that out clause is a good thing for them. It could prove very, very handy. We'll just have to see how he does next year. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Bengals, they they could have franchise tagged Carl Lawson, and they didn't take the opportunity to to do it. you got to start wondering why. Well, he tore his ACL. That's true. But he showed flashes last season Uh, that he was good. That's true. The one thing I think that all these teams that get these big defensive ends are looking for is just a, a good um, 
edge in the draft. I think that's what they're probably going to be mm-hmm. picking up, an, a yeah. good edge edge player in the draft. That could be true. Yeah, definitely. just looking at the Bengals, I mean, th- there's a lot more that needs to be done besides the defensive end position. Like, again, we're here day two of the legal tampering period, and the Bengals have not signed an offensive lineman. He's still thinking about well, weapons for Joe Burrow. Still thinking about cornerbacks. Again, like I alluded to before, William Jackson's not been signed yet by the Bengals. Look, look, hey, hey, hey. I'm fine with the Bengals trying to act like they're competitive, but I don't want them to be dangerous now. Yeah. So they don't need all of that. <laughs> hey, they don't need all of that. Just be patient with the process, I believe. I yeah, mean, yeah. We're only two days into it. Definitely. I'm pretty sure that usually these kinds of transactions happen a lot slower. We've seen an absolute flurry of moves in the past two days, more than I think happens in most off seasons. So I just give it time. There's going to be a lot of players that are going to sign. There's going to be a lot of trades that can happen. It'll come and do time. I agree. Please, Mitchell Swartz. Yep. Please. All right. Anyways, next player, Corey Lindsley, signed with the Los Angeles Chargers. Five years, $62.5 million. Now, Corey Lindsley is now the, he's reportedly the highest paid center in the NFL now. And he deserves it. I mean, he's one of the better centers in football. Last year being pretty much one of his best years in Green Bay. Pro Football Mm -hmm. Focus rated him his past season at an 89.9 out of 100, which it's first among centers last year. And this is great. For Justin Herbert, because Justin Herbert has some protection on the offensive line, especially with a veteran mind like Lindsley, who's been in the league forever. He can really help out Justin Herbert and kind of develop a good relationship with him because center quarterback relationships are very important in the NFL. Just you can see what how Lindsley and Aaron Rodgers have been working together for so many years and they've been so successful. And you know, you don't think the Packers offensive line's terrible, right? Mm -hmm. It's really, and it all starts with Corey Lindsley. Yeah, I think this is a a good pickup. I don't really have too much to say on it, but I mean, it's it's a lot of money, but it's for a really good player. And I think with the addition of this, they can really start to use Justin Herbert's rushing ability. He doesn't do it much, but he does have the wheels whenever he needs them. So they might be able to design a lot more of those quarterback run plays. Kind of like I was talking about with Cam Newton, just to a lot lesser of a degree. Uh, so this sh- this should be a good pickup, and it's going to keep him safe on the inside. They do need to shore up on the outside, though. They don't want a lot of people coming around the edges because that's where they're going to attack now if they have a good guy like Corey Lindsay, Lindsay fortifying the inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Luca. Who are you? Hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. You're not going to do Unless this to Bryce me. Unless Bryce has more to say. You're not going to do this to me. So. Unfortunately, Calvin didn't put in a little picture, but I'm supposed to be talking about the Saints, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. I am. All right. So, wow. a huge part of the offseason, you know, it's been about the New Orleans Saints because people have been complaining about, oh, the Saints are $100 million over the cap. How are they going to get past this? I've seen videos of, oh, they're going to go winless next year because they can't afford to pay all their players. The fact of the matter is, the Saints right now are under the cap, under the cap limit. They cut a hundred and one million dollars in cap space. Now, they've released some very good players, players that I think are very talented. Quan Alexander still unsigned. Janoris Jenkins just signed with the Titans. Emmanuel Sanders was also released. He went to the Bills today. Josh Hill released now a lion i mean the first three sanders jenkins and alexander i i'd say they're very important pieces and they will definitely be missed thomas morstead one of the better punters in the nfl gonna miss him too but the saints they still have a lot of good young talent left on this roster it's not like they're done for yes there is a hole at cornerback there are some holes at linebacker. There are some holes at wide receiver. Maybe you need another tight end now because Adam Troutman is your number one tight end. But mm-hmm. through this cap hell that the Saints are under, they managed to re-sign. They, they extended Taysom to their advantage. They can get out of Taysom's contract after this year because of the, the restructure. 
they just signed Jameis Winston to a a one-year deal, which also has interesting about his deal is that two years are spread out in void years. I mean, he has signing bonuses in 2022 and 2023, which Mm -hmm. means that if he plays well enough and he wants to stay with the Saints, they can get a deal done relatively quickly because the the money is like the the structure of the contract of the next contract is already there. All Jameis has to do is say yes. And of course, you know, that can always not happen if Jameis wants to go somewhere else, like Houston maybe, like after this season. He can do that. But of course, yeah, I forgot to mention Drew Brees retired, you know. Uh, and that's going to be – that's a hard one for me to say as a New Orleans fan. Even though Drew Brees, yes, his talent was declining, he still is probably one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, and I'm just going to say it like that. Agree or disagree, I think he's one of the best. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, great, I don't think yeah. either of us are going to dispute you on any of that. Uh, before you go, Luca, I'm going to mention one guy real quick that's off the script so we don't have a picture of him. Am I ever going to be able to talk? <laughs> no. <laughs> <In a minute. laughs> yeah, it might be a blessing in disguise. Uh, yeah. The Texans just signed um, Terrence Mitchell, from the Brown, or a uh, former Brown, to a two-year deal for $7.5 million. He's a cornerback. I don't know if either of you guys know about him, but he was eh last year. Much like the Cleveland defense was. Eh. Yeah, yeah. That's the best I can put it. He's, so, he's played all over the place, right? He hasn't really stayed at one team. No, he hasn't. But okay. I think this is a very weird signing by the Texans. What's for a team Texans? that's trying to convince their star <laughs> quarterback to stay. <laughs> uh, I guess they might have already given up on that. But it's their, uh, it is hard to see what they're doing. He's played there before. Maybe they like him. Who knows? Dude, that Who knows, and Tyrod dude. Taylor. <laughs> oh, yeah, Tyrod Taylor. I don't think any of us were going to talk about him. Yeah, that I, I We don't have to were. talk about him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Texans, they are just making some weird signings. I like Tyrod. I think that he's never gotten a really good chance in the NFL. Just a really bad luck player. He but has. He's gotten chances. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Bryce, look at his history. There, it is. It is such a terrible history. I feel so bad for such him. Such a terrible history. I know he started on the Browns, man. That's terrible. <clears throat> he won it. No, I, I love bringing this up. He won a Super Bowl. <laughs> he did. <laughs> I don't. Th- I don't think he has a bad history. He won a Super Bowl. Fair enough. Um, Anyways, all right, Luca, who you got? All right. Well, now I don't even remember who I have. Okay, <laughs> first I got Joe Dunny. How do you say his name? Joe He's Tooney. going to the Chiefs. Tooney. Yeah. Thank you. Um, to the Chiefs, five-year deal worth around $80 million. He's an offensive lineman, plays more of a guard. Uh, this is really good for the Chiefs. Um, they're sort of cutting everyone on that line, so I, he's a part of a solid rebuild. I know Mahomes loves him. Uh, and um, Last year, he only allowed two sacks. So this is a win for the Chiefs. Yeah. Y'all got any opinions or no? I don't know how quickly I would label this a win. The signing itself, not bad. But the whole decision-making process that the Chiefs are going through right now, they cut almost half their oh, offensive line. Oh, oh, I, I agree. They should have not cut everyone they have. I'm just saying the one sole player for the Chiefs, I think he's going to be a good fit. Yeah. yeah, I think he will be a good fit, but it just doesn't make much sense to me to cut half of your offensive line just to make a huge, a huge contract signing for another guard. I, mm-hmm. I don't really get the logic behind it, but maybe they think Joe Thune is better than anything they had. Maybe they think he's worth the money, but very interesting. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. I yeah. I agree with you, Calvin. I, I don't know what they're thinking. Man, I would have loved the Bengals to sign Joe Thune. Yeah, <laughs> that's why you're against this. Is you just wanted him to go to the Bengals. No, I mean, it doesn't make sense. Why would you cut your two good offensive tackles and sign a guard? I don't know. I have no idea, but if it works, it works. You're going to look like, if it works, you're going to look like a genius. If it doesn't work, you look like an idiot. Yeah, I won't. Just I'm not going to judge it too much right now because obviously I'm not a coach in the NFL and Andy Reid has already yeah. won a Super Bowl in the past 2 years. So, yeah. Freaking Denny's. And he was in the ass. Super Bowl last year, so um anyways, moving on to Matt Judon going to the Patriots. 
He's a linebacker, plays off the ball. Four-year deal worth $56 million. Uh, last season, he had 32 solo tackles, 18 assisted tackles, six sacks. He's a beast. This is a good deal. I don't really think either of y'all can dispute that, yeah? No, I can't dispute that. Nope, good deal. Yeah, it's just one more time. Bill Belichick throwing around the money. Just huge signings left and right. I mean, Patriots fans have something to look forward to. Is that stimmy yeah. check? <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, yeah, he's just a beast. Um, everyone in that team backs him, believes in him, and why wouldn't you? It's Bill freaking Belichick. Um, anyways, moving on to my last one. That's right, I only had three. Um, Kevin Zietler going to the Ravens. Uh, it's a three-year deal worth $22 million, so not that much. Another guard... I this is okay. I don't think it's that amazing. I think he's worth the money. And in a Ravens point, I think in both point of views of the player and the team, this is not bad. He was okay at the Giants. It, this is not too bad, but it's not too amazing at the same time. Do y'all got anything? <laughs> I don't. I don't have much for this one. Yeah. So, no, me good, neither. Good I mean, I'm not the Browns fan over here. This has nothing to do with the. Browns, he what? played for the Browns recently, yeah. before the Giants. Oh, but he was at the Giants. Yeah, yeah. okay. That's I, what thought, I, I thought you were saying just because it was in the same division. Nah, I was like, man. What? No, no, he's he's a good player, and it's a good signing. There's not much to say about it. It's just it, it was a good good pick. Anyways, I like the segue you almost had there, Bryce. Speaking oh, about the Browns, <laughs> Calvin, Calvin, we have a stud on our team, dude. We have John. Freaking Johnson. The best name in the NFL. Dude, I'm going to keep it real with you. Heart to heart, I had no clue who this guy was. No clue. But I'm glad I know him now. According to tons of Rams fans, he is like the most underrated safety in the game. Yeah, John Johnson is an absolutely crazy player. He is one of the very, very few defensive players in the league that can keep Metcalf in looking like a human. <sighs> I mean, it, he is a great player. So just to recap, safety, John Johnson signed with the Browns, a three-year deal for $34 million, about $11 million mm-hmm. a year. Very, very good deal for a very, very good player. The Browns were lacking a lot in the secondary last year, largely because they had two very good players. Well, Injuries. yeah, two Injuries. very good players out for injury. They were also dealing with injuries throughout the year. So if they can keep those players healthy, they have a very good-looking secondary right now. John Johnson joins a couple other players. I think it's uh, Greedy Williams, Grant Delpit, and uh, one more guy. I can't think of his name right now in the in that secondary. So it should look a lot better. Uh, he's just John Johnson is a beast. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. He is a very, very good signing. They did very good. The only reason we don't mm-hmm. hear as much about him as – we should is because he played alongside Jalen Ramsey who stole the spotlight a lot of the time on defense yeah um, moving on to the other guy the Browns signed Tack McKinley uh, for a one year deal that's only like four million dollars I think this is okay I don't think it's bad he's not incredible but he's a defensive end by the way if he proves to be good then we'll just resign him for another year this isn't bad. So, Yeah, a lot of fans wanted a defensive end to go alongside Miles Garrett on the other side of the line. Mm-hmm. And while we didn't spend a lot of money on a big player, Tack McKinley is – he has a lot of upside. Let's put it that way. He played very well in his first two seasons in the league, uh, racking up a good amount of sacks and a decent amount of games as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but last year, I really I could not figure out what happened with him. He did. He only played four games and got one sack in that time. So I'm not sure if he had an injury or if he was just benched or what. But he did not play a lot last year. So he seems like he has the upside to be a good player, but he could also be a complete bust. I think it's great that the Browns were able to get him for only four million. And I think he could be a difference maker if they give him time and if they bring him into the system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, side note, I forgot to mention with uh, Kevin Zietler, my man, Kevin, going to the Ravens, very important to know, he loves dogs. 
He absolutely <laughs> loves dogs. So I was trying to I was trying to learn more about the player. And I see BaltimoreRavens.com. Five things to know about Kevin Zeitler. I was like, oh, this is going to help me in preparation for the video. Zelter is a dog lover and, and quite an impressive dog trainer. What? That doesn't help me at all. And the the best one's the fishing. Fishing is one of his passions. Oh, that that's what you need in a good player if they love fishing. This is this is part two thousand two hundred thirty three. Why the Ravens just suck. Right, I'm done. So, <laughs> hey, hey, uh, hey! Yeah. I'm what? I'm crying right now, dude. All right, because the Washington football team decided to sign William freaking Jackson right after Wait, I what? say Bengals freaking please sign William Jackson and the football team is like what? hell no. Yeah, cornerback uh, Will Jackson signs a three year deal for fourteen million per year. Yeah. Oh. That's a good pickup, Bob. That is a really good pickup for them. You know, Calvin, you're a your little thing about the Washington football team winning the division. They're you looking, know, getting mm-hmm. a little it's better. Getting a little good, yeah. You're yes, right. sir. I'm telling you, you heard it here first. First person to call it. Washington football team. Well, I don't know. I feel like people would have called it before, you know, the real fans. <laughs> yeah, not yeah, the yeah. Fitzpatrick fans. Hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not use slang around here. Come on. <laughs> Two things before we go. Luca, you said Zeitler wrong three different ways during this video. <laughs> Zeitler. Dude, dude, I can't even pronounce my own name right sometimes, so leave me alone. <laughs> and second thing, me and Bill Belichick had the same birthday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's fun stuff. Anyways, thank you for tuning in to Sports hey, Banner. Uh, uh, <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, 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 me and um, Whoa Vicky have the same birthday. Let's go. <laughs> I'm not even going to try with that, dude. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for tuning in to Sports Banner. We'll see you next week. (laughs) Bye.